Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Jackson Callum, who is the founder of JCal Digital. Welcome to the program, Jackson. Thanks, Mike. I really appreciate you having me. You're welcome. Hey, so I know that um, digital marketing, e-com, and promoting our services virtually and online is such a massive uh, requirement. It's not even an opportunity these days because it's like so far gone past opportunity, you better be there. So I know it's such a critical thing for business owners. So I want to dive into this and see what exactly your um, take on things are and your outlook for the, the future. But bring us up to speed on what's your background and uh, what led you to start your firm. Awesome. Absolutely. So JCal Digital is an agency that helps businesses, small and large, with sustainable revenue growth, um, which might sound boring to the entrepreneurs out there, but the entrepreneurs out there understand that sustainability is probably one of the sexiest words in business. Um, you know, it's it's one thing to have a, a quick push and win um, a little bit of cash overnight, but it's another thing to have something that can, uh, you know, a legacy that you build that continues to grow and grow and grow as you scale it responsibly. So that's what I help brands do, mostly in the service-based sector, service industry, anything from pest control and solar to um, dentists and software as a service companies. Um, E-commerce, not too much. I have good friends in that area, but for the most part, anybody who's got a service um, or a product that has a service associated with it, that's the type of business model that I can help scale. Yeah, and you you meant, mentioned something that I think is really important because there's a difference between scaling um, and also doing a product launch or a service launch. You know, so for the pest control company, hey, it's good to be this time of year, so let's do this push and this, and you get this pop of business, but that's not scaling your business for long-term growth because it be- it becomes that peak and valley and peak and valley valley in the um, promotions. So how do you explain to a business owner that, yeah, you need those promotions, you need those pushes, but at the same time, those need to all be sequenced and part of the strategy that one leads to the other, which leads to the other, and then they, there has to be a cohesive brand strategy that goes along with it. Exactly. And I think to your point, and in all fairness to the, the companies out there that, that face that, part of that is, part of that has to be considered in the scaling. Um, and that, like, let's say that you have a ski resort. Well, if you have a ski resort, you're, you're going to have a season and you're going to have a non-season, but your business needs to prepare for those things. Um, you know, again, if you're selling pest control in Texas, then your sales are going to spike during the summer months. Um, and you need to be prepared for that, and you need to <clears throat> hire and staff accordingly. Um, but it's not just a matter of seasonal businesses. There's there's trends in the market that you have to pay attention to, but ultimately it, it really comes back to making sure that your marketing, your sales, and your fulfillment are all in line, um, which I imagine we'll, we'll be talking about throughout the call. But most companies have critical flaws in their marketing, that leads them to just simply disappear in the noise. Um, and you know they're not getting traction, they're wasting a lot of money on ad spend, uh, or they're not spending anything because they don't know what to do, or they're spending on super cheap systems that aren't going to get them the results that they want. So um, you have to really diagnose that and figure out what are the areas of strength of a business, what are the weaknesses, what's really holding them back, um, not just you know what do they think is holding them back. Um, makes me think of a really great book that I love and I recommend, which is Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Have you read that one? Familiar with Donald Miller. I haven't read his book, but I do I do watch his videos and read his, uh, have read his website quite a few times. Yeah, I mean, I would recommend the book, definitely. I think he's got a new one coming out, um, you know, Business Made Simple. But Building a Story Brand is all about telling the 
story of your brand, but not in once upon a time, but making it relevant, making that mission and cause. So that messaging is so important. And, and one of the things he talks about is when you confuse, you lose. And I think a lot of service business owners would say, oh, well, our services are and we do. And, and, and they say mm-hmm. the things that they know that they they know, right? But they they sometimes can't see the forest for the trees because that's what they've always said or always done. But maybe that message is falling on deaf ears to the the public, to the the customers that they're trying to reach. What do you do to help uh, your clients uh, tighten up and polish up their messaging? Great question. So I have a blueprint as part of my opt-in series that's incredibly important for that. It it was created by Jake Larson of Video Power Marketing. Uh, Jake's known as the YouTube ad expert of the world. I got to work with him for 18 months to help grow his business several years ago. Uh, what a fun opportunity to to launch viral video ad campaigns at uh, you know on the highest level. Everything from Nordic Track um, with their 10 most annoying people at the gym, uh, you know, to working with the creators of the Squatty Potty series, uh, and even the number one YouTube ad of the decade. Um, and all of these these systems, uh, I'm sorry, all of these viral videos are built with systems in mind. It's a systematic approach. Um, some of it is copy. Some of it is the funnel itself. You know, how, how smooth is that slide that gets people from, you know, where they're at to the offer and how easy is it for them to accept that and to move forward with the product itself too. There, there's so much that needs to be laid out in order for that to work. But if we're simply talking copy, um, you know, StoryBrand's a great place to start. I actually refer people to StoryBrand all the time. Uh, another great copy source is TalkingShrimp.com of all things. Talking Shrimp, um, I recently found this. Um, uh, Laura runs Talking Shrimp. She's one of the most genius copywriters I've seen. Uh, but again, the key problem is entrepreneurs, they find one little solution like this or they hear one thing and they run to do it. And they don't consider that this is one pillar on a bridge that needs to be constructed between you and your customers or you and your prospects. And you have to finish the bridge. You can't build a fantastic pillar and expect a car to drive across. The bridge doesn't exist yet. You have to put the whole bridge in place. And, and I'll even add one piece to that. They try to do something and they do it for 10 minutes. It didn't work like gangbusters. So they quit and say that didn't work. And you have to give it time yeah. to, you know, get into the marketing, get the response and tighten up and, and listen to what the response was, whatever the marketing piece might be. Maybe it was a Facebook ad. Maybe all it needs is a headline change or a, or a picture change for the ad copy. But it, it, I feel like so many people just try something and they don't give it enough time to get that momentum. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big part of it. Um, and again, I think that's the abandoning of the pillar aspect is you try a couple pieces of, of Facebook, but it doesn't connect all the way. It doesn't connect the whole bridge. It's just one pillar. Facebook's only one aspect of that system that needs to be in place. So there's, there's more to it than entrepreneurs want to believe there is. And I, I think that has a lot to do with the the unethical nature of, of marketing right now um, is yeah. everybody wants to promise easy and quick because nobody wants to consume hard and long. You know, and I'm working with a client right now that's in a, a specific industry in financial services, and they made a comment similar to what you just said there it made me think of this. So, you know, everybody wants to promise quick and fast and, and over promise or make certain uh, uh promises. But if the audience that you're marketing to kind of is on edge about that and like, oh, here comes another, you know, big promise, even if you can deliver it, you've got to be cognizant of that because you don't want to have that message just um, disregarded because maybe you, you're making a bold claim that you can back up. So, so how do you determine if that bold claim is something that will resonate with the audience? a great question. In fact, I'd like you to clarify it for me a little bit just to make sure I go the right route down that. So let's say that you can deliver this widget service in three days, mm-hmm. and yet you, 
your competitors or the audience has been hearing those kind of stories from competitors for years. And it's like, there's no earthly way. We're sick and tired of seeing these claims of people doing things in a week or less. It takes months and months and months, but you've got it dialed in and you can deliver it really, really quickly and effectively. So if you were to say, we can do this and you make that statement, you know that your audience is going to be re- uh, reading it and hearing it through the lens of, yeah, right. And then they don't even give you a chance. So how do you communicate that? you know, spectacular service, which goes to competitive advantage in a way that is believable and enough of a competitive advantage that sets you apart, but not so much so that people go, "Mm, yeah, I'm not even going to take the next step because they're just going to try to sell me into something and then not perform. That's a great question. So there's, there's a couple of aspects about that. I want to focus on the first, which is ignored often because people don't like to talk about it, but that's budget. If I have a solution that's absolutely going to change this world, then I better be willing to sacrifice and throw everything I have at it. You know, put your money where your mouth is with that. So, for instance, let's say that I'm the creator of the Avengers series or some similar movie series, okay? I'm not going to go into the room and say, oh, my, like, what's the least amount I can spend on promoting this movie? (laughs) I'm not trying to win the Sundance Film Festival. I'm trying to win the world over. And so, you know, I always ask entrepreneurs up front, what's, you know, they say, what's your budget? And I say, well, do you want to, do you want to win the Sundance Film Festival or do you want to be the next Avengers blockbuster? Uh, Because if you want to be the next Avengers blockbuster, then you better be willing to put a hundred million dollars or more into this. Um, But if you just want to win on a local level and make something kind of pretty that you and your kids can be proud of, uh, you know, then maybe you only need to put $5,000 towards this. That question has to be addressed head on by any business owner or service provider up front is are they willing to put in the time and the money to showcase how great it is? And then the solutions, you can, you can make a fantastic solution stand out by creating um, the zero moments of truth, uh, which is something Google coined. But ultimately, that's, you've got you to have enough messaging and clarity about the service out there as well as enough proof and credibility from people who are using it and perhaps even some authority figures talking about it as well and saying, wow, look at what this did for me. It's really hard for a fantastic product to fail um, you, if you're willing to put the budget behind it. But most people aren't because they know probably deep down that their product's really not as fantastic as they've convinced themselves that it is. And that goes back to the old quote, um, you know, once you start selling hammers, everything starts to look like a nail. Yeah. And you, you bring up a good point about how much you're willing to invest. Um, so that goes to believability and it goes to, are you all in, you know, like burn the boats and you, I know, you know, that story. Um, but it, yep. it's kind of like this. Um, it, it becomes that piece to the entire puzzle where you go, okay, I need my brand to be perceived as the relevant brand in whatever this, you know, service industry is. And if you still are using an AOL email address, and if you have a (laughs) cheesy website, and if you have uh, branding graphics that look like clip art, it doesn't matter what your, you know, grandiose, um, you know, claim or marketing messages, people are going to take one look at that and go next. Um, so maybe when everything is, is dialed in and, you know, Hey, that's a nice website and Hey, some good crap. And, and you're, you're not mentally, your, your audience is not mentally going, I must see a website that, and I, but they see these things that are kind of like uh, not congruent. But I think maybe then when all that's dialed in and then you have that message and you're like, Hey, we can, you know, whatever the claim is, maybe if you're willing to put your money where your mouth is and, and guarantee it, right? So I just pick the three-day thing, whatever yep. service or level. Or, but what if it's like XYZ service done in three days or less or your money back? And now all of a sudden it's like, okay, now that's a little bit different. Yeah, what you do when you do that um, is you create your unique selling proposition, right? It's, it's a part of it as well as an unfair advantage in the market. Um, if you're the only one in the market who's offering such a service, uh, you know, and has such a backbone, it can definitely be a great way of, of getting people to at least come in and, and try the service. And in the worst case scenario, if your service, let's say you have something free that you offer, um, is getting a ton of bad feedback from people who came in, well, that's your gold mine. Utilize the feedback, find out the details, 
and make the changes and adjustments you need so that you can scale responsibly. So that's one of the benefits of offering uh, beta programs is you can learn on a small scale what needs to be adjusted in order to attract the greater market. Yeah. hundred percent. And, you know, you said something uh, a second ago about ZMOT that I want to dive into a little bit there. It's one of my favorite topics because the buyer's journey, you know, no matter what you sell or provide, you know, services, it could be that pest control, that plumbing company, that dentist, there is a buyer's journey and you must understand what the buyer's journey is. And many times it's, you know, oh, my friend, uh, you know, in the neighborhood told me to, um, you know, I need help with my whatever pastor or, or dentist. And they, they refer that name. Do they think, do you think that, um, well, uh, I guess I'll phrase it like this. Please do not, Mr. or Ms. Dentist or a pest control company, think that the minute you get that referral, it's just hands down, they're coming in to, to wave money at you because they go through a buyer's journey. They investigate. They Google your name, your brand. They want to see what's out there. And, of course, the obvious, make sure you have good reviews. You want that good stuff. But what else do they see out there when they Google your, your name and your brand? Well, it, if it's just your LinkedIn and your social media and your website, They expect to see that, but what else? And I think that goes to that zero moment of truth because the moment of truth was I experienced this product or service. Did I like it? That's the moment of truth. But now you might not as a brand get the at bat to even try to give that good service because the zero moment of truth told the story that was lackluster. So how do you work with your clients in that realm? Absolutely. So the marketing aspect goes back to that blueprint I mentioned, you've got to define a number of different aspects, but it's, there's ultimately six or seven aspects. There's your audience. You have to define who your target audience is and narrow that down as much as possible. Um, you don't want to sell to everybody 18 to 100 years old, um, you know, that makes anything from $0 to $100,000. You have to have a massive marketing budget to brand at that level. You really want to start by looking at your ideal client who has money that can pay for this, um, who lives, you know, within two miles of your business. Um, if you're a local business, uh, with a local provider that they have to go to, um, you know, and then once you've defined your audience, there are many more criteria that you can, you can use my workbook to do that. Then you also want to define your product and your service. Um, what is your product? What, is, what are the benefits of it? What are the results that we should expect out of it? Um, what is the process for utilizing the product? All of those aspects, define them clearly up front because the fear of the unknown will keep people from moving forward and from buying. If I don't know what your dental office looks like and I don't have a picture of it, I am not going because I've been to places where I've shown up and my goodness, this is not what I expected in my head, we're not going to waste our time if those aspects aren't clear up front. Then there's your service. What is your service like? What does that entail? How important is that to you? If you don't mention anything about your service or your service sounds humdrum, then we know that, again, we're not willing to go in and do that because there's there's plenty of businesses out there that are willing to cater to our needs and help us have a first-class experience. And there's your offer you have to define the offer as well. What is it that you're giving me right now? What incentive do I have to come in? Is it the best in class service in the city, hands down? Um, Is it the cheapest uh, service in the city? Are you attempting to tackle both? Um, You know, which is not typically uh, looked at as the right way to go, but there are plenty of viral offers that have managed to tackle both. Um, you know, you have, but you have to align your offer with what you're willing to give to your clients and what it is that they actually want as well. For instance, I had a dentist that gave away a, I don't know, it was a free Apple iPod or something or, or, or even a watch, um, you know, in order to get people to book um, for their, for a dentures appointment and nobody cared. Because the Apple, the Apple product had nothing to do. There was no relevance with that, that target and audience. what it is that they were trying to accomplish. Correct. Um, you know, and then once you have that defined, once you have your audience, your product, your service, and your offer defined, writing your message, your invitation to people becomes super easy because you know who it is you're writing to, and you can call that audience out. 
You know what it is you're trying to give them. You know what type of service you're trying to provide. You know what offer is going to incentivize them to move forward. And so the message writes itself once you have those things defined. Yep. And that's how you attract and people. You better be front. able to stand behind all of that and deliver. Because if you mm-hmm. say, here's our service deliver or our service promise, right? Or, oh, our offices are so, you know, whatever. And then it's not what they experience. That will backfire you uh, in, a, in a minute. Yep. It is much more common that brands who, who scale with virality uh, disappear, um, you know, and, and destroy themselves than it is that they succeed by doing so. Um, and you don't hear about that. You don't hear about the brands that go viral and implode and, and lose it because they don't become significant enough to be no newsworthy. But if you, I was thinking, how can I teach that on a global scale? How can I help your audience understand what it's like to, to lose as a viral campaign if nobody's heard of such stories um, or not at least on a universal level? And I realized probably one of the best examples of that would be to go to the archives of GoFundMe and the archives of Kickstarter. Because there are many, many great campaigns that looked amazing or products that were amazing, um, you know, especially in the like the smart jacket space that kicked off with such high promises and are gone or are in the middle of rebuilding because they learned that, oh, wow, it's not as simple as attracting people and building a great product or service. You also have to have fulfillment uh, on at a scale and at a level where you can keep building responsibly. And a lot of that comes down to, am I the leader that I need to be in order to build the team that will also be as dedicated to this as we need to be in order to uh, build upon our strengths and improve upon our weaknesses and build this responsibly. And it's, it's not easy, um, but you do have to pull all of that together if you're going to scale a business responsibly. You know, it's funny you bring up the Kickstarter and the GoFundMe campaigns because I find myself doing that when I watch Shark Tank. You know, like um, we, we uh, my whole family watches it. We right. love watching Shark Tank. But, you know, we'll watch like an older episode, a repeat we haven't seen in a while. And I'll pull out my tablet and I'm like, I wonder what's up with that company. And it's like nowhere to be found. So, you know, you made it to Shark Tank and it sounded great. And now years later, you're nowhere to be found. That shows that you didn't handle the growth because – um, as you know, there's a lot of um, – there's several times that the Sharks will go, hey, are you here really for a deal or you just want the exposure? And, you know, you're going to get on Shark Tank, get the exposure, maybe get a deal and have that big influx, but you better be able to handle it and handle the scale. So r- really, really powerful uh points we bring up. So if someone is listening to this and want to learn a little bit more about JCal Digital and how they can make sure their messaging is clear and make sure the buyer's journey is clear and make sure that all of their, you know, aspects of, of working with clients is optimal in the services industry, what's the best way they can reach out and uh, learn more about your company? Sure. Anybody who'd like to can go to jcaldigital.com. It's jcal jcal digital.com i've actually reworked our funnel um, so that if you just put your name and your email address right there on the first page it says send me marketing that works and i give away all of our materials right there in a series of about five emails and then the series shuts off it's not going to bother you day in day out um, it's about five emails long and I've included the first class foundations for free. Um, so the blueprints in there, the workbooks in there, my hiring methodology is in there as well for marketing teams, sales teams, and a whole lot more that will ultimately help you with the pre-interview process for JCal Digital. I'm extremely selective at who we take on. Um, you know, as a client, it has to be a great fit relationship-wise. Uh, they have to have the leadership skills um, in order to expand and you know they have to have the humility as well to be coachable enough and they have to be hard workers but the nice thing about it is i figured anybody who's unqualified can't afford me anyway um, you know and can't afford our team so these materials are going to help you qualify on your own and then anybody who does qualify will be able to read those five email series decide hey is this guy on the right track Uh, Does this team exude the principles of growth that we're looking to also implement at our company? 
And if so, right there um, in that email series, they should have a really good idea and they can just book an appointment from there and uh, see if it's a good fit for us to work together. Excellent. Well, Jackson, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your uh, uh, content. I had a great time talking about some of the fun things that uh, that I know about and, and seeing how you implement it with your clients. And I'll make sure that your uh, link to your website is right in our show notes. So thanks again for your time today. Yeah, excellent input, Mike. I appreciate your show, man. Thank you. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.